My job is a lighting artist, which at its surface means that I make light for animated films. I've worked on three Ice Age movies, two Rio movies, Epic, Ferdinand, uh, the Peanuts movie, and I was just blown away by that. I thought that was such a cool job to have. So at some point you need somebody to tell you pencils down. You need to finish. It's amazing to work on a film because it's this thing that you protect for over a long period of time. Like you're, you're working on it and we have all the security at our office and we don't want anyone to see it. Nobody cares if you have a master's degree if you can't actually make something look good. I can't stress enough how important it is to get feedback from professionals. Most of the people that I work with have started off in another field. I think people are blown away when they come to our office and they see the amount of work that goes into it. Oh yeah. <laughs> I am Mike Tanzillo. I am a Senior Lighting Technical Director at Blue Sky Studios. I'm also a teacher. I run my own online school called TDU. So my job is a lighting artist, which at its surface means that I make light for animated films. But really what that means is that we uh, use light and shadow and color to help craft the mood of the film and to have, help make a film look a certain way. I've worked on three Ice Age movies, two Rio movies, Epic, Ferdinand, uh, the Peanuts movie, uh, as well as some others. And um, yeah, I've been doing that for over 10 years and it's the best part of my day. I got into it by, I started off as an art major, a photography major at Ohio State. I was doing some random photography jobs out of uh, college. Ken Ronaldo, he teaches robotics and one of the things that he wanted was all of the images for his book to be 3D models. And so I taking a 3D modeling class uh, but this is the first time I really got into it and I really did like a deep dive into learning how to model and make uh, uh, images look great uh, for a book and I, I just got more and more into it and um, never really thought about it as a, as a full-time job until I watched Finding Nemo and I was actually watching the behind the scenes of Finding Nemo and I found that there was a group of artists who went scuba diving off the coast of Australia to help define the look of the film to figure out the way that the ocean looks like in wide open ocean waters versus very close to Sydney and how not only did that actually look but how that affected the mood of the film and I was just blown away by that. I thought that was such a cool job to have so I looked into it and it turns out that there is this job of being a lighting artist on animated films which is again a combination of what I loved in photography and, and playing with light as a, as a medium and also uh, doing this work that I really loved, which was uh, the 3D work on the computer. I've been working in the industry ever since. A typical day for me is I go in in the morning. I will have a meeting with my supervisors, the director, the art director of the film, and we'll show what we are currently working on. Those people will give feedback on the work. They'll discuss uh, what they want you to do. Usually. The notes are, are either based on the mood of the film, uh, if the scene is supposed to be more romantic or scary or intense, they'll, they'll discuss how ways to visually alter the image to make it feel whatever the mood is of the film, either in color, or in contrast, or in value. Uh, and then we'll discuss that, and then I go back to my desk and I'll spend the rest of the day uh, altering the 3D files or the images in a way that will meet their aesthetic goals. And so we have this big render farm that that computes all this and calculates all the data. So at night before I leave, I just send everything off to the render farm. By the next morning, I should be able to come in and see something uh, from what I've worked on and then I start the process all over again. So I just show that work, that update to the directors or the art directors and I go from there. And that process is called, you have dailies. So you have dailies in the morning where you show your work and then they give you feedback and then you go through the day that way. I love that it's a combination of both creative and technical challenges. I've always loved problem solving and this is the biggest problem solving uh, challenge that I've ever thought of in my life because it's a lot of, um, we start with a very simple scene, a very basic file and then we're told we need you to make this look romantic, we need you to make this, make the audience feel a certain way about these images and so we have to uh, again adjust the color, adjust the light in order to get that mood and that emotion. I wish, I wish so much that I could take people into our reviews when we're looking at the frames and you can see the detail that we get into, the way that, um, how bright their teeth are. Can we see their tongue when they're talking? Can we make sure that this character's skin tone matches perfectly to the way their skin tone looked in this other shot? And it's not only an aesthetic challenge, but lots of times it's, it's technical because again, it's all being crafted in the computer. Every frame of an animated movie can take anywhere from 20 minutes to 
several hours to up over 100 hours a frame to render in the final product. So it, it takes a very long process. In each frame, um, there's 24 to 30 frames per second of film. So if I'm, render, if I'm working on a shot that lasts five seconds long, that means I would need to render out roughly 120 to 150 frames that night. Um, I let it bake overnight. It's like, think of it as like you're doing pottery and you're putting it in the kiln and it needs you know four hours in the kiln. It's amazing to work on a film because it's this thing that you protect for over a long period of time. Like you're, you're working on it and we have all the security at our office and we don't want anyone to see it. And then all of a sudden you make it and you package this final product and then you just, you literally release it to the world. So it's something that you think of you and, and uh, a couple hundred other artists working on. It, all of a sudden it's, it's everywhere. And after, you know, our productions can be difficult and they can be draining. Um, and so lots of times people will travel after, they're fin after we're finished with a movie. And when I finish working on a film, there's usually a month or two between the time that I'm done and the time that it actually gets released. So lots of times I'll be traveling. It's everywhere in the world that you go. So one of the films I was in uh, Spain and I just was like trying to get away from it. And you walk past a movie theater in Spain and there's the posters for this movie that you worked on or you travel to Japan and you'll see uh, toys of the films that you worked on and you realize how global this thing is that you're working on and how many people that you're, in, uh, that you're influencing. Like we get letters all the time from people uh, talking about our films and how much it's inspired them for uh, this and that. And, and it's really, really amazing to feel like you have a global impact on something. It's really special. So the biggest thing is just the, the number of people and the amount of time that goes into making a single shot for a film. So you've got probably 30 artists that go into any film, any shot that you watch in any animated film. There's um, artists that design the characters and the sets and the buildings that you see. There's somebody who models each character and each set and each individual element that's in the shot. There's somebody who builds the skeletal structure of the character. It's called the rigging artist. They'll give the character the ability to move their arm this way and this way, but not move their arm so far back that you can't uh, see it. And then they take that skeletal structure and they'll pass it off to the animator who actually gives the character performance. There's artists who make the skin look like skin and make glass look like glass and make wood look like wood. There are artists that work on just the cloth, the, like the cloth simulation, make sure that again, as I'm moving around, my cloth is moving with me. Effects artists, so if uh, I'm sitting here talking to you and there's a big explosion behind me, they handle uh, dynamic simulations of anything. And sometimes it could be like an explosion, but it could also just be like, maybe my hand moves through the air and some dust particles move along with it. There's lighting artists that I've talked about that create the light and the shape and the mood. And then there's stereoscopic artists too, like people who will make uh, an image uh, 3D. So when you go and you watch a 3D film, they're the ones who actually make it 3D. Amongst all of those are people who manage that pipeline because it's very difficult to pass it between 30 different artists and kind of coordinate all that. So I think people are blown away when they come to our office and they see the amount of work that goes into it and also the amount of passion that goes into it too, the amount of, of love that's giving to all these shots. I would say the hardest aspect of the job is that we're all kind of perfectionists at a certain point and you have to put it down. Like as an artist, you always want to refine your work, you always want to make it better, you always want to go, but we have release dates, we have theaters that are waiting to show our product, so we can't just work on it forever. So at some point you need somebody to tell you pencils down, you need to finish. And um, so it's hard to uh, walk away from something when you still want to continue working on it someone tells you it's already amazing or is it like you tell it yourself that I have to stop because I have to move on and work on other things? It's somebody else telling you to, to stop. I mean, you, uh, a lot of us are very prideful and we want to continue developing. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are times you've been working on something for six months and you're ready to be done with it, but lots of times it's, it's the difficult part is just, just stepping away and, and knowing that it's done. For our industry, where you go to school, what education you have, doesn't matter as much as can you do the work. All right, do you have the ability to create these images? Nobody cares if you have a master's degree if you can't actually make something look good. For me, it was important that I, that I got an education in art, um, that I have an understanding of design and composition and all that, that good stuff. And for me, I, I worked out really well for me to do that through uh, traditional school. Do you need that? Absolutely not. We tell people all the time in the online school that um, 
We don't give grades because the industry doesn't care about your grade point average. Again, they just care about whether or not you can make it, make the, the beautiful images. So if it was me coming up, again, I would set, tell people to focus on learning design, learning artistic composition, uh, learn color theory, learn how to do more traditional art forms of painting, photography, drawing, just get those basic art skills and that will really help you in the long run. Now, if you're an international student or you're or somebody who's trying to work overseas, having a college degree will be very important to you. So I know that there are a lot of people who want to come into the industry in the US from other countries and if they don't have a, at least an undergraduate degree, they have a really difficult time getting a work visa to work here. That's the only time that I say a college degree is, is truly necessary. But if you live in the United States and you want to continue to work in the United States, you just need to focus on making good work and doing it a lot and, and doing it over and over again until you get better. Having uh, tenacity for this stuff and learning how to receive feedback on your work, because it's hard, right, when you're working on something artistic to put yourself out there and to put up your images and have someone say, change this, do this, adjust that, this is too bright, this is too dark, and understand that they're talking about the image and they're not talking about you or your work as an artist. And then to be able to take that information and, and, and really approach a way of making it better and really get after making it better, you have to do it a lot you have to do it over and over and over again before you can really, really get good at it. I've learned in my time is just um, ways of doing it more effectively, more aesthetically pleasing, faster, and just getting the experience at it. I can't stress enough how important it is to get feedback from professionals. That's one of the things, again, with our online school, we have, vi we have uh, videos, but one of the things that we say too is that you can find with, with YouTube and with every other media out there, you can find tutorials on how to do all this stuff. But for us, it's extremely important to A, learn the topics and then practice it and then get feedback from somebody who knows. So I know like for our online school, we'll, I'll do daily feedback with people and at any point we try and give feedback to them within 24 hours so that they can take what they worked on and continue to refine it because it's through that refinement process that you get better and through this critique process that you get better. You know what you're working on isn't great. Um, and you can sense it, but you don't know how to make it better. And it's only through doing it a lot and getting feedback from people who can tell you you're here and you need to get here and how to bridge that gap between those two things. And they're the only ones that have been through that process too. So having this like mental toughness is a very important one. Um, and then just the ability to be good person. Well, the biggest one for us is uh, our resume is important. Our, where we went to school is, I guess, important. But the big thing for us is uh, submitting a demo reel, which is a bunch of artwork that we've created. And what they look for is your ability to demonstrate um, that you're able to create something at a level that they need you to create at for the films. For us, our, our common interview is to sit down and we look at our demo reel, which is generally uh, a minute to two minutes of our best work, and they'll ask specific questions about how you created something, what were you thinking about, like what were your technical challenges, what were some of the artistic challenges of this project. So it's a lot of going through your work and explaining your process of doing something. I'll talk about my path first. So I started off as a uh, essentially a render wrangler. You do some uh, simple technical tasks to help out the other artists. And in a lot of ways, you're like a technical assistant. I did that and then worked on my lighting skills and kept showing stuff and eventually was given some shots on Ice Age 3, which is my first film that I worked on. Um, and then once I was able to prove myself more and more as an artist, then I, I became a junior lighting technical director, which is an entry level artist position. Uh, and then from there you move up to mid-level and then you become senior staff, which also is, uh, when you're first starting, you're, you're assigned very simple shots. It'll just be like a lot of characters, like two characters talking to each other, kind of going back and forth. Um, and then as you advance more and more, you get more complex shots. Maybe the camera's sweeping, maybe there's a huge crowd of people. Um, and then once you're like a senior or a lead, you become uh, in a position where you're actually designing the light design for multiple shots. And then you start to have a team of people that work for you. The future career path from here would be uh, either 
uh, a lighting supervisor, which would be, again, there's, you know, you're in charge of your shot, and then there's a sequence, and then the lighting supervisor is in charge of the look of the entire film. There's also like CG supervisor or, effects super, or visual effects supervisor, which would be in charge of not only the lighting of the entire film, but also all of the, like the kind of the technical pipeline. Very common. Most of the people that I work with have started off in another field. I, again, I started off in photography. A lot of people are from uh, architecture, which is an interesting one. We have a lot of people who are traditional artists, painters, sculptors, that kind of thing. It's very, very common for people to switch into this, into this field. Some, there's more and more content that's, that's required now than ever before. There's content, you know, there's there's the animated films that have, have been there for the last 20 years. Uh, the Pixar's, Blue Skies, DreamWorks, Sony's always producing film. But on top of that, um, Netflix, Amazon are going to start getting into making more and more films, which will mean animated stuff and visual effects projects. Then there's streaming services, YouTube, Hulu. The industry is going to be changing in the next five to ten years, I would imagine, because as computer power gets stronger and as there's more need, uh, people are going to be having more flexibility in, in terms of their work, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Actually, I, um, I have an online school that I teach people who want to get into computer animation. Uh, it's called TDU, and the whole reason why we started it is because there is a lot of things that we didn't learn in school that we learned in the industry. So we're trying to teach people about the things that really make you a good artist, like I was talking about with the experience. Uh, and a lot of it is that I was so focused on learning all the technical software when I was first getting started. Um, I was so focused on learning the computer programs and how to do this and how to click the right buttons. And I always thought that there was like some magical button that the film creators made, that animation, that people in animated films like could hit to make their stuff look so beautiful that I just didn't know where that button was and I didn't know where that menu was in the software. And really it's just a matter of understanding how to make images look a certain way. And they like industry professionals don't have any uh, access to additional equipment that an amateur doesn't have. They just have the experience with it. So it's teaching students how to look at their images, analyze them in a way that, uh, that's going to help you improve them and go through the process of iterating and getting better. There's three things that we, there's three things that I always focus on when I'm, when I'm working on a project or when I'm working on a shot. The first is to create mood for the image. So whenever the, uh, or, or anything to help emphasize the story. Again, if it's scary, romantic, whatever's going on. So crafting it in a way that helps tell the story. And then there's, uh, we like to create visual shaping. So light and dark fall off areas. So there'll be a bright side of my face and a darker side of my face and making sure that all the characters and all the objects in the scene have that. And then the, uh, the third one is getting the character to read off of the background, either a bright character over a dark background, a warm character after cooler toned backgrounds. It's those three things that people struggle with the most. There are so many people who helped me along the way, right? Like I'm thinking of my family that was so supportive of uh, me being an art major, which isn't the, the nicest thing. My wife who's so supportive when I work late at night I'm thinking of all the people that helped me get into this career. I'm, uh, there's uh, my professors uh, in undergrad and, and my photography professors who taught me how to have an appreciation for things looking beautiful. My grad school professors who were uh, who helped me get my first job and helped me build my skills to that level. There have been so many individuals that I've worked with every day in the industry that are so inspiring, and they teach me every single day. Um, I've never I, there hasn't been a, a day a week. A film that's gone by that I've, I'm not a better artist at the end than I was at the beginning. If I could solve any world problem, it would just be making sure everyone has access to clean water. I would do that. And then I figure if everyone has access to clean water, then everything else kind of solves itself. Your favorite thing to do in your free time? I like running with my wife. What's your favorite country to visit? Don't make me pick one. I'll pick, I'll pick Italy. I've had a great time every time I go to Italy. One thing you cannot live without? Visual stimulation. Like I love just uh, going to galleries and looking at things that inspire me. What's your favorite book? I would say, oh, To Kill a Mockingbird. 
Yeah. What's your favorite movie out of those that you've created? My favorite film that I've ever worked on was Epic, which isn't the most blockbustery, biggest film we worked so hard at, and I'm still supremely proud of the work that was done in that film. What's your favorite movie outside your work? If you've ever seen the movie Life is Beautiful, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. I can only watch it once because it's real sad, but it makes me so, but, it, but I love it. The best advice you've ever received? You're gonna be bad before you're good. Expect to be bad before you ever get close to being good and continue to work at it and continue to grind at it because it's worth it in the end. What makes you sad? Hearing my baby cry. What makes you happy? Hearing him stop crying. <laughs> you should get into my profession if you are both looking for a technical and aesthetic challenge. If you're artistic, but you like technical challenges too. And um, yeah, you just love making beautiful images. You should not get into my profession if you are. If you're thin skinned and you aren't able to hear feedback on your own work and make improvements to it, it's, just gonna, it's gonna be a long day for you. If you're watching this and this sounds insurmountable or like somewhere that you can't achieve, I can assure you that when I first started on this path, I was not a good artist. I did not have the technical ability. I didn't have any of that. I just had a dream and a vision to work on this stuff. And I can tell you that for anybody, it's going to take time, it's gonna take commitment. It's just so rewarding in the end when you can get there. So my recommendation to you is don't be overwhelmed with the insurmountable task of achieving your dream. You just need to break it up into small parts, understand that's gonna take a while, be patient with yourself, and eventually you'll get to where you are. And it's really, really rewarding when you can look back and still have no idea how you got here, but know that you can get here someday.